I want to talk to you about how using curriculum can be a crutch and how you can let those crutches go. You know, they say, buy this and your kids will be smarter. Use this. You'll be more organized. Get this series and you will unleash their inner genius or something like that. Those promises curriculum companies try to make. Marketing has targeted our community for some time now. Advertisers realize that while we are an independent lot, we still harbor a lot of fears. Isn't that how marketing works best? Identify the fear or the lack and then convince people that they need the product to fill their void. It's as if they're handing us crutches and telling us to lean on them. When in fact, we have no weakness, no lack of opportunity, no need for crutches. The whole world awaits our children, and these crutches they offer will simply hold them back. Pre-planned materials often inhibit learning, keeping the child from all the benefits of discovery and exploration. It keeps parents from continuing to engage and facilitate new interesting opportunities out in the world. Don't look wistfully at those crutches. Embrace freedom. And yet, so many don't. If this is your first time with the Unschooling Mom to Mom podcast, I'm Sue Patterson, and I'm here to help you embrace unschooling, to help you see how unschooling really can work for your child in your family. My own three kids are grown now, and we took this approach to home education. My kids are now 34, 32, and 29, all off on their own young adult adventures. Taking this unconventional path did not hold them back at all. In fact, more doors opened for them because we did. So I've circled back to bring more resources to help you see how this can work. If you have questions, we can talk on the phone. I have a membership program where you can get a lot of support from other families going through the same thing, guides, books, courses, all the things. So reach out if you need a little more support. You don't have to do this by yourself. Okay, but I want to talk to you about this curriculum thing. Because when people do things on what seems like a subconscious level, when they don't question it and they just accept it, we have to look a little deeper. What's the hold? What are we believing way deep down? This desperate search for experts or someone to tell us what to do, isn't it time to let that go? No wonder we have those tendencies, though. Schools conditioned us to look to teachers for instructions. How many times were you told, don't read ahead? Our self-confidence was systematically broken. If we poked our little faces up to explore outside the very clear boundaries school had set into place... We were humiliated, ostracized, or punished. And if you think this is too harsh of a characterization, what was used in your schools to get you back in line or make you more cooperative? Were you called out in front of the class? Did the teacher say, class, Johnny has something he wants to share with all of us, when Johnny did not have anything he wanted to share at all? Were you sent to detention to think about what you had done? Was your name scrawled across the chalkboard when you did something wrong? A reminder to the entire class of who the troublemakers were. Not that long ago, religious schools and many schools in the South used corporal punishment for reprimanding youth. And while now spanking is passe at school, diagnosing and medicating are the control mechanisms du jour. So why do I bring this up? Because this is what has conditioned us, you, me, all of us who spent time in the school system. We learned something there, something that trumped any other academic pursuit. We learned making waves comes with a price. We learned to stay safe. We learned do not lean into that inner yearning that doesn't fit the school plan. But you're listening here. So either you already have or you're trying to muster up the courage to say no to the schools and you've started on your home educating path. You still run into a lot of naysayers though. So you've either figured out ways to word it or maybe avoid the conversation altogether. One way that does seem to appease everyone is if you've found a good curriculum, even if it's first grade. Your naysayers are a little relieved if you tell them this often because they doubt themselves and definitely they doubt you. How can you provide a good education for your child without a pre-planned curriculum? They ask questions about oversight or testing or scope and sequence, none of which have anything to do with learning and actually only relate to the teaching process. 
because that's what using a curriculum does. It pulls you into the teaching process as opposed to the learning process. Maybe your concerned relatives and friends come to you from a place of fear for you and they have only your best interests at heart. So let's assume that's the case. Where does that idea come from though? All that research they've done on unschooling families and even the current homeschooling movement in general? Not likely. It comes from that deep-seated fear they learned as children. Don't step out of line or something bad will happen to you. Before you've even talked to them about the enormous advantages you've discovered by choosing home education, they can't hear it. They're working on their laundry list of all the things that could go wrong. And if their concerns center around academics, their assessment of your intellect or college opportunities or basic education, you may have discovered that whipping out a full-service curriculum will calm them down. And it helps with those lingering fears that you haven't completely tackled, too, that pop up in the middle of the night. But you're still locked in because that's kind of the issue with these naysayers. They've watched you eyeing the door. They see the yellow light spilling in from the cracks on the other side. But now you've gone and opened it. And it's just like Dorothy on The Wizard of Oz leaving that familiar black and white room for the Technicolor. But they've been conditioned to stay in their seats. They've bought into all the rationales that tell them that that black and white classroom is best. And when you start heading for that door, they panic for you, for themselves, for the entire system that their world revolves around. That is a lot of fear swirling around. And you have it, too, to some degree. You may have just started dismantling it. It's impossible to leave the school system and come away unscathed. We come with various levels of confidence and courage. And that's where curriculum comes in. Curricula development companies don't want you to trust yourself and just jump into life. They want you to prep for life with their textbooks. And they want you to think that life is better tackled in a linear fashion. But what part of real life is like that? They want you to doubt your own abilities and rely on them. They're counting on all those years of you using curricula to influence you to the point that you think that's where learning comes from. So when you choose curriculum, you insert someone else between you and your child. Experts who believe they know more about what your child needs to learn than you do, even though your child is standing right in front of you, showing you, not them. You trade a watered down third person narrative about life for actually living the life in front of you and your child. Instead of creating a learning environment unique for your child, you try to fit them into that curriculum box. You stop your own curiosity as you look for cool opportunities to share with your child and trust that that curriculum knows best. You become a warden, enforcing the curriculum package on your child. And when your child tries to assert himself, explore his own curiosity, you focus on snuffing that out. You see that as defiant resistance because you're convinced that the priority needs to be checking the boxes in that all-important curriculum. You tell your child that you know what's best for him and he cannot trust himself. If you discover that the curriculum isn't working for you, you stay with it a little longer because after all, you've spent quite a bit of money on it. You perpetuate the cycle of being dependent on others for their learning and their choices. But... If you let go of those crutches, remember you don't even need them. Your child will learn to trust himself and his ability to find what he needs in the world. You and your child can live a full, rich life starting now, not waiting till later, after 18, on the weekends, after graduation. You get to discover what your child's true interests are. They won't have to wait for years into adulthood to figure them out. Your family bonds are prioritized and healthier than they ever could have been. Your child knows that when you tell them that their learning is really theirs, you mean it. You are truly in charge of your own lives. What an adventure you'll have together. Instead of choosing the crutches, choose the freedom of stepping into a life with your child. I'll have links to other podcasts and blog posts that will help you dive deeper on some of these topics, like dealing with those critics, differentiating between teaching and learning, even a link to a long list of research to help you back up your decisions. 
get support, learn more about how unschooling can work for you, and I'll be back again next week.